This is SE Featured. This is the power of sports. Whatever happens on draft day, we can wait for that call. It's nothing compared to waiting for the call to whether or not you're going to live or die. James Conner is dominating this game. What an effort by Conner. This kid is something else. After being named ACC Player of the Year the season before, in November 2015, Pittsburgh running back James Conner went for a chest X-ray. The image was clear. The diagnosis, devastating. Hodgkin's lymphoma. Cancer. His chemo treatments began immediately. Round one. After his sessions, often Connor didn't go to bed. I sleep. My dog James, a warrior. He went to the gym to work, and then to the field to join his team. Any little bit of energy I had, you know, I was trying to make the most of it. So, 4:30 a.m. team workouts, you know, I was there working out with those guys. Anything to stay active, anything to get ready for the opener. May 9th, Connor endured his 12th and final dose of chemotherapy. All good. Hello, how are you doing, Doc? Really well. Two weeks later, he got the phone call telling him he was cancer free. So we all good? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. That's amazing. James Conner, naturally today, it's his day. Him stepping onto the football field is a miracle. Throughout the whole battle of fighting the cancer, all that mattered to him was to run out of that tunnel one more time. The give to Connor, stiff arm, goal line, touchdown, James Connor, and Heinz Field erupts. Just to see him healthy and running on the field and just happy, and it's just the best, best feeling ever. Even before then, Connor's own victory over cancer had reached far beyond the field to others facing their own battles, like Ian Malaszewski. A football player and nationally recruited wrestler from Connor's hometown, Erie. The two met just before Pitt's season. I'm the football player, and I came back to the field. That I get all the attention, but you know, it's other people who don't who don't get the press, and they're no uh, less important than I am. Competing in the Greco-Roman Nationals last June, Ian's life changed in the opening match. The kid kind of got behind me, and I threw like a headlock, slipped and hit my forehead on the mat with all his weight on my back and all my weight on my neck. Usually when athletes get hurt, they stick their thumb up. And I looked down and tried to stick my thumb up and no movement. I knew right then I was paralyzed and I knew I had a long road ahead of me. Connor would visit Ian at the hospital. He'd come a day, two, three days a week, and they'd visit, listen to music. He'd help Ian eat. He'd help Ian drink. He'd itch Ian's face. He's a special kid. He motivates me because he can't wrestle no more, and, uh, and he knows that. But his comeback is getting feeling and moving again. I know that he can't play football anymore, and so uh, that's one of the reasons why I play. Connor also worked for and played for another young athlete last season. Go, Andrew. Andrew O'Neill was raised a Pitt fan, playing every sport he could with his older brother, Matthew. Until doctors discovered a tumor in his abdomen yielding a sudden diagnosis, neuroblastoma, a pediatric cancer. He had always really liked James Conner. I feel like he was very similar to him. You know, he'd get chemo and then he'd go to practice and run and do drills with the team. And Andrew would have chemo, be in the ICU, and then play in a baseball game within 24 hours. He said, I really would like to meet him. Andrew got that chance in November, before Pitt's game against Duke. 
his face lit up when he seen me. He told me I was his favorite player. He's got my heart. Andrew loved every minute of it. I asked him, what did James say to you? And he said, he told me he loved me. That's what stuck with Andrew. He felt that James loved him. With Andrew watching at home in early December, Hunter received the Disney Spirit Award in Orlando. There's people who are dealing with worse things other than cancer. I got a friend, Ian Malchess, he up in Erie, who's uh, paralyzed from the neck down. He's fighting a battle right now. Young kid Andrew O'Neill, the same day I figured I won this award, he had two wishes, you know, to meet Mickey Mouse and meet me. And with this being a Disney World, this is for me and him. And you just play the game of football for somebody who can't. Just four days after the award show, Andrew died. He was five years old. Their boy meant something in this world, and he had an impact on people. He changed lives, changed my life. Through every workout, in every sprint, James Conner knows not every story shares his ending. Not every fight has his outcome. He also knows what he means and why his getting drafted matters to others. With the 105th pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select James Conner. <laughs> Three families, two phone calls, one bond, a dream realized for more than James Conner.